In this video, I'm going to show you uh, how to create your first map. We're going to outline how to create a shaded map, a uh, shaded map with an outline, with labels, just plots of values, a contoured map, how to read the label at the bottom of the map, uh, how to clear the map, and how to uh, refresh the map and, and what the auto refresh feature does. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look off into the upper left portion of the screen. This is this is the basic uh, parts of creating your first map. Uh, first thing you need to know how to use is this uh, big white box on the left. This is where all the list of maps that you can choose from reside. And what populates here is defined by what uh, model you're using. Are you looking at current conditions or are you actually using a forecast model? Uh, right now we're set for the uh, current conditions and it says that right at the top here. And then these are the different current conditions maps that we can plot. To plot a map all you have to do is double click one of them. So let's just do something simple. Let's do the temperatures. Uh, as you can see at the bottom of the status bar down here it says downloading complete, rendering image, and then it draws your map. Now you can see on this map we have shaded areas in between the lines out here in the ocean where my cursor is. It's easier to point out what I'm talking about. You have color between these lines. The lines themselves are highlighted and you have values. Now if we look in the upper left, that's this is what the settings are for this. You have shaded selected, you have outline shading, that's what this is, and you're showing the label values. So let's do this again with some different options just so you get an idea of what it looks like. First we'll clear the map by double clicking what we selected and then we'll go up to the top here and we'll select contoured. Notice that you can only have contoured or shaded selected at one time. With contoured selected we redraw the map. As you can see by this map you no longer have the shading you just have a contoured value now in this case the outline shading isn't actually going to do anything because that just applies to shading as it says. Next we'll do another map without the labels. And this is the map that you get. Uh, notice that there's no labels and there's no shading in between. You can also do shading without the label values. And in this case we're going to shade but we're going to outline it but we're not going to put labels on it. So that's what that looks like. And also notice that like like in the previous video where I showed you that when you move your mouse over a certain county it will show you the county name in the far lower left as you can see it says Humboldt and Elko down there. Uh, if you put your mouse over a line it will also tell you the value of that line. Uh, right now in the far lower left it says 55 so where my cursor is over that line the line's value is 55 degrees. Now look closely at how this line is outlining the shaded area because I'm going to do it again without the outlining. So as you can see in this way of drawing the map it's a lot less obvious where the edges of the contours are. You can also just plot the values by themselves. When you select plot values only it will not draw any lines or shading. It will just show the values on the map. When you're zoomed out the map displays uh, random temperatures uh, so it doesn't overlap on the values but as you zoom in uh, more and more of those values become evident uh, and it's able to display more because it's able to fit them without overlapping the values. Uh, when you zoom in like this you can also turn on cities so you can actually see uh, what cities these values are by but again with that it uh, removes some either a city or a value to try to keep things from being too cluttered. Uh, so if you know that there's a temperature up in this area maybe you could zoom in more uh, to actually see the value. So that's a case where uh, having too much on the map can be harmful but uh, if you want the actual value instead of a contoured smoothed over map this might be useful. Now the label in the lower left part of the map, current surface temperature has the units in F degrees Fahrenheit. 
taken from 1 p.m. Central Time, and there's the date. But if you're doing a, uh, a map of a forecast product, then the information in the label can be quite different. Here in the lower left it says 6 kilometer deep layer shear, which is the type of map that we have. It says KTS, which is knots, so we know the units. And then it says 06Z, and the date is 42009, 18 hour forecast, Sunday night. So that's the time that this forecast is valid. This is the 18 hour forecast, so 18 hours from when the model initialized or 18 hours from when the model ran is when this is valid. This is when the forecast is for. That's what's in this section right here in the middle. On the far right it says model NAM WORF 12Z41909. That's the model that this is from what is actually forecasting this and when that model ran. This was 12Z on 419 so that was earlier today this morning and you can see down in the lower right part below my cursor it's 1813 Zulu right now so this ran six hours ago uh, this is the 18 hour forecast valid at 6Z which is actually around 1 a.m. tonight uh, this Sunday night that I put in here is something to make it a lot simpler to understand when this is for um, we have the time down here so you can do the conversion uh, from Zulu to your local time but if you look at this Sunday night you know it's Sunday night so that makes things a little easier to figure out when this is for to clear a map you just simply go up to the uh, upper left where it says erase and make new map or you can double click the highlighted map in your list either one will clear the map there's an auto refresh feature if you go up to options it says auto refresh if you select that and you look again it should be checked that will periodically re-download the latest data of whatever map you have open at the time right now I don't have anything open so it's not going to auto refresh anything uh, I keep that shut off myself just because uh, sometimes I'll be flipping through the maps and it just happens to become that time when it wants to update something and it's right in the middle of when I'm trying to do something manually. So that becomes more useful when you you set it up to maybe display warnings or radar and you just want to keep it on the screen and walk away from it and come back and look every once in a while. 